Underground of Dreams. So, you know, this is being uploaded before the, the next stream, and the, this stream is they talk in shells, I think. Or they live in shells. Whatever. He is in dark in darkness. Unlike the darkness of night in the enclosed de devoid of depth or expanse. He hears a heavy door slowly rum rumbling open. A shaft of light shoots in, but it's not so well defined as that. To eyes accustomed to nothing but darkness, however, the faint gleam feels like a shower of sparkles. Or sparks. God damn it. Stop this, please. I beg of you. Let me go. A young man screams echo through the emptiness. No voice answers him. Crouching in the darkness, Kai counts the footsteps. Three men have come in. The disorderly footsteps probably belong to the young man. The other two were perfectly regular. Please, I'm begging you. If it's money you want, I'll give you all the money you can ask for for on the outside. Please, I won't forget to show my thanks to you. Please. The only reply of the two men who have brought the young one here is the drunk is the clunk of iron locks opening. No, no, please, I mean, you'll do anything you want, anything! A dull thud, dull thud is the sound of flesh tearing bone wrenching, whatever. Someone collapses, collapses on the floor. A strange scream, the clunk of an iron lock closing. Kaim knows the young man has been thrown into the shell diagonally up opposite his own. <sighs> when you are locked into one of these windowless shells, your hearing becomes accurately sensitive. Don't do this. Let me out of here. Please, let me out of here. From the sound of the voice, Kaim can imagine a young man's face with boyish traces. A small-time hoodlum, hardly a step above a teenager gang member. <sighs> when he was still on the streets, no doubt he used to swagger down the sidewalk, his kindness but cowardly eyes clear no, darting every which way. The two men who brought him here make maintain their silence to the end, their footsteps moving off together, the heavy doors open and close and closes again. Left alone in the darkness, the young man howls his en entries or whatever for a time, but when he realizes they will do no good, he sh shouts himself hoarse, spinning out one curse after another, until he begins to sob. Quiet down there, an old man calls out from one of the inner shells. It won't do you any good to make a fuss. Time to give up, sonny. This is the voice of the oldest man living in the dozen or so shells lined up in the darkness. He was already here when Kaim was sent to this place. It is always his role to, to quiet and co comfort the Obstru Obstru uh, the newcomers, whatever. If you're going, if you got time to ball like that, keep your eyes closed, huh? Just make sure you keep sh sucking into your memories of the outside like a piece of candy. Sound sounds of suppressed laughter come from the shuddering surrounding shells. Kaim joins it with a with a smile and a sigh. All the shells in the dark are supposedly full, but few of the inhabit are inhabitants are laughing. Most of them have lost the strength to laugh. Hey, Sonny. The old man continues his role as advisor to the newcomer. No point in making a fuss. Just calm down and accept your fate. Otherwise, 
otherwise, and here a note of insanity enters the old man's voice, they'll just drag you out of here feet first. This is exactly what happened yesterday to the former inhabitant of the young man's cell. He has been screaming on and off for a day, then came a day of banging his head against the shell wall, then nothing, until he was dragged out in silence. So, get a hold of yourself, Sonny. Don't let the darkness swallow you up. Close your eyes and imagine nice scenery from the outside. The bigger the better, the ocean or the sky or some huge field of grass. Remember, imagine, that's the only way to survive this place. It was the advice he gave to the... This was the advice he always gave to newcomers. But this young man screamed ter tearfully. Who the hell do you think you're kidding? Survive this place? And then what? I know what this place is. No exit. Prison. They throw the lifers in here, give them just enough food to keep them alive, and in the end they kick the bucket away. Am I right? There's nothing left to hope for. His shouts turn to sobs again. This is the reaction of most of the newcomers. Nor are they mistaken. This is a prison. Each of the shells is a... is a solitary cell with bars and the sun, sun shines on the prisoner only on the day of his funeral. Yeah, my voice is cracking again because I need a drink, damn it. Everybody dies, Sonny, that's for sure. You just can't let your mind go before your body does. Hope doesn't have to fade unless you throw it out yourself, the old man goes on softly. Then he adds with feeling, This system we live under can't last much longer either. The old man is... The old man is a political prisoner. As leader of an anti-government fa faction, he lives re res resisted. Yeah, he long resisted the dictatorship until he finally lost the struggle and was imprisoned. The young man has no ears of the old man's words. However, he continues thrashing on the floor and crying. The fe this fellow won't be in his shell much longer than his predecessor. In a few days, or in less than a month at best, he will go to pieces. The darkness is that powerful. Depriving a prisoner of light is far crueler than taking his life in an instant. My, my, the old man reflect, reflects, this fellow... This fellow's not going to do us much good in a prison break. The old revolutionary laughs. It might be a genuine laugh or a, a bold front, but in any case, almost no one laughs in response. Tomorrow morning, or rather since there is no clear out morning in the darkness, after they go to sleep, wake up, and have their next meal, Another cold corpse will be dragged out wordlessly from another shell. Hey, listen, how many of us are here now? The old revolutionary asks. Answer if you can, if you can hear me. I can hear you, Kaim says. His is the only voice. Man, this is bad. We were filled up a little while ago, the old... The old man gives a dry chuckle, Kaim asks. I wonder if something's happened out, out there. Maybe so, answers the old revolutionary. If you ask me, this would be about the right time for a cup... For a cult de detat or a revolution... My boys aren't going to keep quiet much longer. Uh, 
what are your, what was your name again, Kai? Have you noticed what's happening? How there used to be a lot more guys getting thrown in here until a little while ago. Most of them real nobodies, not worth sentencing for, for, <sighs> to life. Uh huh, sure. The young man was one of them. Nothing but a small time crook. It just so happened that the storehouse he broke into belonged to a rich man, which ties to a powerful politician. This is what the, this was the only reason they put him in a shell. The shell always used to be full. They would throw a bunch of men in here and they would die. Then the new men would co come and they would die. The young man was one of those. The terror of being enveloped in darkness was was too much for him, and he went to pieces. He w was apparently having hallucinations at the end. I'm coming, Mama. I'm coming. Wait for me. Please, Mama. He repeated over and over like a child. Where are you, Mama? Here? Are you here? And he got, gorged his own eyes out with, a, with his bare hands. I figured things were getting scary out there. The cops losing control. So the government was really starting to crack down. Which is why these shelves were always full. This is what brought the young man here. Blood street. <sighs> yeah, this. Streaming from his eye sockets, he died muttering in, sna muttering in snatches. What did I do? Everybody knows damn well. There are plenty of men way worse than me. And my voice cracked again, so sorry. But now the place is empty. Do you know what that means, Kaim? Sure, there's so much crime out there now that the government can't suppress it. You got it. You got it. The whole royal family might be strung up by now, for all we know. It's a revolution. It will happen any day now. That means you and I will get out of here. My boys will come to get us. Just hang there a little longer. Kaim nods in silence. The old revolutionary goes on. You're strong, Kaim. Not many guys could say could stay as calm as you thrown into a shell and enveloped in darkness like this. Not even kind can explain it. It is true that he was strangely calm when they put him in the shell. The darkness was somehow set, seemed to recognize, recognize as a distant memory. In the distant past, he too ha may have taught tasted the anguish of the other shell inhabitants so tortured by the fear of being sealed in darkness. How are you so tough mentally, Kaim? Does it mean you two are revolutionary? No, not me. His crime is hardly worth talking about. He resisted somewhat under questioning when they brought him in as a suspect. And for that he was branded as rep as he was branded a rebel and thrown into a shell. The old man is probably right, though. The country's dictatorship is almost certainly in, in its last days. It won't be long now. We'll be back in the real world before we know it. I have hope right in here, and it will stay here until I abandon it myself, the old revolutionary mothers as he continues to convince himself. The prison falls soon afterward. Armed young men come charging into the darkness and open the shell's bare, barred doors. Embraced by his boys, the old revolutionary goes out. Wait, Kaim cries, trying to hold him back. But he was too late, anxious to see the new world following the destruction of the old system. The old revolutionary steps outside and opens, opens his eyes. It is evening. Though the sun is nearly down, the light is still strong enough to burn eyes accustomed to total darkness. The old revolutionary presses his hands to his eyes and, and with a groan, crum 
crumples to his knees. Kaim has saved himself by sh shielding his own his eyes with his arm. Not even he knows what caused him to do this. Could distant memories have taught him that the truly frightening thing about punishment by darkness is but is what happens after the release from prison? When could I have been in prison and where? More important, how long have I been on this endless journey? With bleeding eyes surrounded on the ground by his voice, the old revolutionary searches for Kaim. I came all this way, Kaim, only to make one terrible mistake at the bitter end. My eyes are probably useless now. This is precisely what he asked Kaim. This is precisely why Kaim, he asked Kaim for one last favor. Tell me, Kaim, what is the outside world like? Has the revolution succeeded? Are the people happy? Are they smiling joyfully? Kaim opens his eyes slowly and just barely beneath the shade of his hand. As far as the eye can see, the ground is covered in bodies and corpses and royal troops and revolutionary troops are heaped on one another. The countless civilians are dead. A mother lies dead with her small child in her arms, the bloody corpse of the child's father next to them, arms outstretched in a vain attempt to shield them. Tell me what you see, Kaim. Af Kaim fights back and a sigh and says, You must work for now on to build a happy society. The old revolutionary senses the truth. I would abandon I won't abandon hope, Kaim, no matter what. As if to say, I know that. Kaim nods and begins to walk away. Where are you going? I don't know. Someplace. Why don't you stay here and build a new world with us? You of all people, you of all people can do it. Can do that, I know. Thank you, sir, but I'll be moving on just the same. Yeah? Just set it outside my door, please. Thank you. The old revolutionary does not try any more to hold Kaim back. Instead, as a parting gift, he retreats for Kaim the words he spoke so often in his shell. There will always be hope, wherever you are, until you, uh, you yourself abandon it. Never forget that. Kaim walks on, his eyes cha uh, chance to light on the body of a young boy lying at his feet. The boy breathed his last, breathed his last with the eyes wa o wide open in fear. Kaim kneels and gently closes the boy's eyelids. He knows deep down in a memory too far away for even him to reach the white the wild, that wild darkness can be a great source of terror. It can also bring deep and lasting peace. The end.